Welcome to another episode of Comics Remixed. I'm Junior. And I'm David. On this episode, we're going to be talking about the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. Is it a hit? Is it a flop? And all the other shows that have seemed to be coming out of the pipeline lately. Gotham PD. Constantine. The Flash, maybe. Agent Carter. Wonder This Wonder Woman trailer that's taking the internet by TV storm. TV or movie. Like, what's going to happen with her? All this other stuff. Uh, we talk about... Exclusive contracts in the comic universe, or not the universe, but in the industry. Yeah, we used to have a lot growing up, but uh, why is that not happening anymore? So t- stay tuned for that. We talk about, oh God, I get a headache thinking about it. Villains Month, uh, the 3D cover one shots. Now that it's over and it's behind us, we look back at it, talk about some of the crappy stories that came out of it. Was it necessary? We, talk, we look at the, uh, the business aspect of it as well. Yeah, and Mark Wade's back on the show. This time, a more personal in- interview between he and I. We talk more about Thrill Bent. Because Mark Wade likes us, and we like him. And also, our second episode of uh, Collector's Case, where Carrie goes on to on location to your house. Well, not technically your house, but he visits a fan of ours named Alex Martinez. And Alex goes ahead and pr- shows us his collection, gives us some stories behind it. It was really cool to be there. It was great yeah, Really experience. good stuff, man. Uh, some of his collections is about the way that they're displayed. And I think Alex really took advantage of the space that he had to work with. And there's a story behind everything. That was the best part of it is when he, he sits there and explains some of the story behind some of these pieces. Yeah. So we hope you guys really enjoy that segment. So go ahead, sit back if you're at work, you know. Don't let your boss see this. Put the earphones on because, you know, we're kind of profane at times. Make sure the cover sheet is on the TP report there. The so FTP. Come, yeah, so he doesn't come after you. Yeah. Like, you know, why aren't you doing your was job? It, no, the, the TPS report. Yes, that's <laughs> what it was. Get that cover for the TPS report. You know, get the memo. <laughs> Did you get the memo? Uh, yeah. So make sure you guys stick around for that. Uh, four episodes left in the season. Winding down. Last episode will be the weekend, uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving. So please... Stick with us. You've stuck with us this long. Watch and then hit the share button. For sure. Thank you. Guys and gals, welcome to another wonderful, wonderful episode of Comics Remixed. I'm David Sanchez, here with Junior Ruiz. Thanks for watching us, people, as always. So, dude, we did it this week, man. We've reached 500 Facebook fans. (laughs) Thank you to the Facebook fans out there who have taken the time to simply just take their mouse and go, like, from all over, we got East Coast, West Coast, we got people from Seattle, LA, from New York. You know, we had a lot, a lot of people pouring in. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, it just shows people like comics. But you know, the biggest thing that kind of got me this week well, was I checked our Gmail account, and uh, you know, you pretty much handle our Twitter. I pretty, I, I do a lot of the Facebooking. Well, it must um, actually, to give credit to Brian, he's been, he's been hustling more. True, but he, yeah, okay, okay. But, yeah, I mean, it's Brian's okay, not okay, here, yeah, so yeah, I'm right, talking right, between right. the two of us. Um, I checked the Gmail fuck account. You, Brian. And it tells you, or it tells us whenever we get new Twitter followers. Um, and it says you have a new Twitter follower. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, we pretty common now. Michael Jai White is now following you on Twitter. I had to scratch my head. They're like, no. Which I'm happy about that. Mike, I have you know, I had your back when we talked about Black Panther. I still got your back <laughs> on Black Panther. All right? Just want to let you know that. It's just funny because everybody's like, wow, Spawn? Lippy was like, dude, Black Dynamite! Black Dynamite. And I was just like, dude, he was the thug in Dark Knight that offered the bounty on Joker's head. A lot of people forgot that. Black Panther's going to be his comeback. Hey, I'm all for it. Yeah. Oh, he was Jackson in Mortal Kombat Legacy. Yeah, he was, but that you don't want to talk about that. That's No, <laughs> that was good. No, it was not. Mortal Kombat Legacy? Oh, wait, the, the media the, episode? Yeah. Like, oh, okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't watch that one. So, yeah, shout out to you, Michael J. White. Thank you for following us. That's awesome. Yeah. But uh, let's roll, man. We have been two weeks in now. Well, by the time you see this, the third episode have aired, but we're going to talk about the first two episodes. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. television TV show. Yeah, same shit. Um, Mixed reviews, man. Uh, Yeah. There, there has been a lot of hate on it, especially from Carrie the Cameraman over there. A lot of people are just not getting into it. Uh, I feel like it's a lot of the hate that came out when Birds of Prey first launched. Like, like I need more Batman, or I need more Batgirl, or um, some people see it as too hokey at times. 
I like um, in Birds of Prey though. Every time they used the flashback scene of when Batgirl got injured, and Joker was fighting Batman. It was always the same exact scene. Like that's all they could fit in their budget. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> same budget, man. Budget. Um, I really do believe that uh, for what Shield is, it's it's good for what it is. Yeah, no. I mean, it's 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 a it's a bridge type of show. It's it's gonna tie in a lot of the mo- the Marvel movies that have been and that are coming, and really, it's an intro for. For most people who don't know much about the Marvel U, so that they could, I mean, what better intro but to be introduced with the more relatable characters, which are the human characters. And it's free. You don't have to go to a theater and watch it and pay ten bucks to watch. It. You know, you just turn on your TV. Yeah. Um, I can say I have gripes, but for the most part, um, you know, it, if anything, I'm, I'm more intrigued about about certain things. If you've been following along, maybe some spoilers here, but with Coulson, the fact that he's back. It's interesting how they're gonna play that out. It they really keep they is. keep mentioning this Tahiti place. Spoilers for those of you who haven't watched. That's it yet. the spoiler right there. They keep talking about Tahiti. This whole segment will have how it's spoilers. how it's a magical place. And since it's right there, I'm trying to guess. Well, they're talking about Tahiti, a place uh, on Earth. So what is it? Are they talking about Savage Land? Disneyland. Are they talking about Wakanda. You know, if it's, no. if it's outside of the Earth, is it like like in the moon with the Inhumans? They have the the smoke. See, now we got two different you. views on that. Just or as well. Asgard. You know. Um, well, regard. Let's let's talk j- before we get to the detail of the show. Let's talk regular fan talk. Okay. Um, the first episode debuted uh, three weeks ago. When it debuted, it was either it was a Man of Steel kind of thing. You either liked it or you hated it. Uh, I found that a lot of people hated it. I actually liked it. I thought it was what it was supposed to be. You guys got to remember first off, it's Shield. It's a show about the spies. It's like James Bond if he had a TV show. You know, you're not going to get the superheroes in this. This isn't about the superheroes. That's like if the Hulk made an appearance, the Hulk steals the show. That's it. There's no reason to care about the Shield character. Well, it's not completely accurate. It's more like how the humans are dealing with the superhero issue. That's true. Not exactly a problem, but it's an issue because now you have in the first episode as in like some of the mo- other movies where shield has been involved they talk about well now you have gods and now you have people who are extra special and now you have all this sh- this sh- shit just raining down on you're Earth. extra special thank you man stop because i have, i will fucking use this pen for <laughs> i mean cool he did try to stab me and i was like ha <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but um yeah it's just how, how the, the hu- humans facing a, either a threat or an opportunity or taking an opportunity mm-hmm. yeah totally um, but regardless, I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, Shield writer extraordinaire Sterninko had something to say. You know, he's just like he absolutely hated it. I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting for somebody. But then again, how how fairly can you take his review on it, knowing how close he is to the source material? Mm-hmm. You know, he wrote it one way, but fans who are watching the show now, especially new fans, are intru- were introduced to it throughout these Marvel movies. So it's different from what he wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? So, I mean, everything goes through changes. So it's just like, how much can you, if you're a hardcore, how much can you side with his, uh, with his argument of the show saying how bad it was and everything like that? It's it's always going to be like that because it, it was his baby. Right. And then even when we talked to Mark Wade on the last episode, he was talking about how, just the, how... He doesn't like how things are are being more fused with reality because mm-hmm. it shouldn't be that way. But but you, know, you also you want to make it relatable in this day and age, you know? Yeah, comics are now selling to the masses, mm-hmm. not right off newsstands. They're selling to the masses, and it has to be relatable. And it's and it it's still something you would say it's more coffee shop now. Yeah, well, you, know, you can walk into uh, not Starbucks. Let's see, what is it? Uh, Barnes and Noble. Get yourself a coffee and sit down and read. A trade paperback. It's it's, you know? com- it's definitely commercial in that way, and um, um, the best way I, I could I could just like also probably one of either our last episode or the one before that, but we, we we just had to accept it. Like this is just the TV universe, right? It's not the comic universe. Yeah, you know, the comic universe is its own thing. Yeah, and you know, and you could you could have different versions of it exist. I mean, that's, that's supposedly the. The ratings actually dropped off on the yeah, second episode. Yeah, I did want to say that. They dropped down by 34%. You know what I can say, man? I, I straight up think it's because they tied in that extremist stuff on the first one. 
I, I, I don't. They, I don't need to be reminded of Iron Man three in any way <laughs> at all. <laughs> Nothing. Like like when that first scene was being played out, I'm thinking, holy crap, Luke Cage, take him down, baby, take him down. And they're like, oh man, extremist, just some really? guy. <laughs> yeah. It totally it, that 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 was a letdown for me. Now, how do like, you feel though? Okay, let me bring Luke this. Cage is probably one of the most human. Other well, maybe that's what people are expecting. They don't want to give it to him right away. I mean, it's only two episodes. You know, you kind of got to let the show build. True, true. You throw but everything right there, right away, then you've already set the bar up here. So you got to constantly keep it up there. But you remember, this is TV budget. This is not movie budget. But even even there, S.H.I.E.L.D. as as we know it, is is a mixture of, like, humans. Oh, right, and right, right. And, and when you, right away, like, my visual of Luke Cage, I accepted it because Luke Cage, he could be, like, the guy in the streets. Right. He just, he just needs jeans and a t-shirt and a, and a special effect of some guy in a harness getting thrown somewhere right that's all you need for luke cage right but i, I and i agree but how quick do you introduce this you know you kind of got to let the show grow you don't want to throw everything no in the that, that's right away. it it's, it's it's i mean you, i don't, you, I don't grow with I, I want to see hell just not luke cage i want to see iron fist i want to see heroes for hire on this. well the story would have been better if it were more of the growth of this super of this of this guy of the resistful Hero is that a word? Resist? Sure, whatever. The resist, the reluctant hero. Okay. Becoming resist. the hero through Shield. Okay, I can see that. You know, that's the, that's that's actually that's classic. That's probably more of the heroes. You get more right. of the hero's journey. Well, right I mean, there. hey, it's only two episodes. It's still early. We don't know what could happen. They might bring the character back somehow. Yeah. Instead, extremist dude. I'm just gonna say it one more time. I do not need to be reminded of Iron Man three. Well, in you will anyway. in a little while. And uh, well, here's one thing that got me too. Because uh, this is actually a very classic comic book thing. And I'm even going to reference uh, Spider-Man. And I don't like Spider-Man. Which one? That f- any Spider-Man. Um, I don't read Scarlet Spider, so I shouldn't. Oh, you mean comic-wise? Yeah, comic-wise. Okay. Um, but that, that very first shot. Tell me if I'm nitpicking. Feel free to knock me out on this one. But that first shot where it's the little kids staring in at the statues of all the heroes. Which episode was this? The first one. Damn, I don't the remember. first exact shot is is uh, the guy who I thought was Luke Cage. His son was looking into the store window. Oh, they were the, action figures. Okay, no, no, yeah. they, well, no, they were statues. They were like busts. They no, like, they were the okay. action figures. Well, either way. Um, I remember. Okay, now I know what you're saying. One thing about. that's carried through the first two episodes is like, okay, S.H.I.E.L.D. covered everything up. And yet there's, there's statues, you know. Also, there being statues, there that leaks into the whole secret identity thing. Mm-hmm. Like, like, should there really be, or should they even allow statues of like the Black Widow and Hawkeye, who are probably their two best assassins, who have done really dirty things in the world? Like, should should they? Did they cover up New York? Shouldn't there I, be? I thought that was something that everybody knew about. Should I mean, it's kind of hard to hide. Yeah, they that. actually they mentioned it in the right. Well, I, I mean, they didn't hide what went down, but they actually well, that's they what tried I mean. to cover up as much as possible. About why, like the terror yeah. sack, like men in like black that. style. I'm not saying like take right, out everybody's right, right. memory, but come on, Shield has. Well, it's a gonna be kind of hard my to hide wife, these heroes. Wife. Everybody knows Captain America. The world knows Iron Man. He's made, you know, he's on TV, so people know they exist. Okay, well, to add to that, how much more of an interesting story would it be to see how that has affected the two greatest spies who have done some of the dirtiest deeds for the government? Well, see, those are the two that have been kept under wraps. Hawkeye and uh, Black Widow, you're talking about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the two. If you notice, they didn't have action figures. Those yes, the, they did. Did they? They did. They were on the left side. I they didn't were right see that. there. I didn't see and that. I saw it right away. I'm like, holy shit, that's their two best spies. They killed motherfuckers. They cold blood. That. I didn't see you that. know? See, but here's the thing that gets me. With the ratings dropping 34% for the second episode, Sternanko gave a praise to the second episode. He says, okay, now they're getting it right. And he's like, I may have spoken too soon. That be good. I, I, you know what? Okay, you know what I think of right there? So I, think, like, I think of that guy who you talk to in a group. And he actually didn't see the movie, but he's still talking about it like if he did. <laughs> that, that's who Starenko is. My, uh, no diss to you with Starenko, but you know what you're doing. Um, a lot of people, in my opinion, are idiots, you included. Um, not you, you. Um, <laughs> didn't see the Nick Fury cameo. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, and it's just like, so. when you watch and a TV funny. show... Wouldn't you watch it to the... I mean, obviously, if it's horrible and you turn it off halfway, that's a different story. But if you're saying, hey, I watched it through and I didn't see him, then you obviously did not watch it through. It yeah. was a surprise. I didn't think they were going to introduce him this early. 
That link that linked on online that uh, that he was gonna do. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, see, so yeah, I didn't know that. If you're into like the social media, like if you're a, mill- a millennial and you're just constantly plugged into something, then yeah, you, you would have known. So yeah, he made the appearance. Um, I didn't actually. I just I did stick through, it. and I thought it was funny the whole fish tank thing. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Well, Carrie didn't see it. Yeah. I didn't see Fury on but, that, um, and I rewatched it. Man, I'm actually. Uh, I guess the only thing actually holding me in is the interest at to see why Coulson is there. What, what do you have theories on that? Um, if you really think there's no there's a few things that they mention, um, like okay, how he came back. Now they're saying he might be an MLD. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, MLD. That's a gang. My fault. M L M D. You want to explain that? What MLD or M L L M D? The one that Coulson <laughs> is. <laughs> My fault. I'm not game banging. I promise. Um, the uh live model life model decoy. Uh huh. So it's like okay. Did the original Coulson die in Avengers and he was replaced with his memories? Was it the opposite where the life model decoy died in the show or in the movie and this is the real Coulson and they had him in Tahiti like, oh, lay low for this reason or that reason while and he doesn't know that the life model died in his place. Like, you know, is this rumors are abound. He may be the vision. Mm, Interesting. He may end up turning out to be the Vision with the whole life model decoy aspect of it. He kind of does have a face for it. Yeah. I I, I, I he's think he's already going bald. Just I don't know if Marvel, God. as a comic company, would like that because of the success of Fury and Coulson in the movies. Yeah, they ended up making these characters in the regular Marvel universe. So if they turn Coulson into the Vision, they're just gonna be like, "Well, who's Coulson in the comics?" He turns out to be the Vision, and then, but you have the Vision, and you know, fanboys get how how we get. Ah, that would be a way to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, clone. <laughs> continuity errors Clones, new yeah. 52 yeah. <laughs> um, time warp yeah. but with the shield tv show and all the hype it was getting before it aired there was uh talk of all of a sudden all these other comic book shows coming to the small screen um gotham. fox has picked up gotham which is going to tell the tales of a young jim gordon uh it's rumored to have batman's rogues gallery in it but it will not have batman yeah how do you feel about that um i'm okay with it because they said they didn't say anything about Nightwing or any of the Robins. Plus, plus well, you, you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. But remember, it's Gordon's younger days. So <laughs> think of it as a year one kind of. Okay, but e- either way, here we got. So there is no one, Nightwing. Here we got the another Robins. one of those things where it's another one of those things where DC is finally getting there. You think so, dude? This is a cop show. When you come break it down, break it down. This is a cop show. Yeah. There's there's been cop shows for a long time. Now my question is. And this goes with the uh, their other announcement for NBC, which was Constantine. Why are they giving them out to Fox and to NBC as opposed to keeping them on their own network? Why do um, you think? Does Fox still own Constantine? I mean, they they didn't they put out the movie? Was it 20th Century? Yeah, probably. No, it was Warner Brothers. Really? Yeah, it was Warner Brothers. Hmm. But like, that's what I mean. Why give this out? I think it has to do with. Do you think like maybe the, people the look style. at style? Just like 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 like. Who puts out these well, kinds of Well, what station does um, Sleepy Hollow and Grim air on? Oh, that's the WB. That, 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 well, yeah. There, there might be a market issue. Like, people go to the WB to see their, their teenage tween. That's stuff. exactly what I was thinking. Um, Maybe because of that, they have that stigma to them. If, if they're going to do something pretty dark where they want to get away with a little more, they might either go Fox or probably FX. Well, isn't Grim more of an adult kind of show anyway? Really? Is it Carrie? It's it's a um it's a dark fantasy. Okay. So what it's, station is it? Isn't it it's on like seven. It's seven or five. It's one of the mains. It's not on Fox. Okay. Fox has I Sleepy Hollow. That's one of those shows. No, it that, is NBC because ABC has uh was it Once Upon a Time? Okay. I, I'm pretty sure I saw a couple episodes of the Grim. Mostly it's a good it's show. Called Grim and the Brothers Grim, but um I don't think it, ever, it would ever go as far as what something that the Brothers Grim actually wrote. Well, see, yeah. I could think. I would think Constantine would work Not on no pedophilia. CW, <laughs> WB, whatever it's called, because isn't that where uh, Supernatural airs? Or yeah, isn't that where yeah. it started? But then again, right there, there you go. The teenage heart throbs and all that stuff. Uh, and when you when you think about uh, Gotham City PD, you don't think about that, you know? Right. So, what do you think? I'm actually now that I'm thinking about, it, I'm surprised they didn't sell two FX, who's done things like the Shield. Yeah. You know, which is totally unrelatable to Marvel. But, man. If if they got the same team that worked on the Shield to work on Gotham PD, that'd well, be a crazy show. That would th- be crazy. It'd be dark. It'd be violent. What do you think though? When they Man. say, "Well, Batman's Rose Gallery will show up, but you won't see the Bat," yet it's taking place in like a year one kind of aspect. 
a lot of these Batman villains didn't exist until Batman was around. Well, that's the interest. Who were they before they put on costumes? Very true. And then later on, you could get into, like, because there was a Batman, you know, it kind of gave permission to these psychological fucked up people to put on their own costumes and go even crazier. Okay. But yeah, who who were they before the costume? Mm, maybe. You 52, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you didn't want to bring back, uh, you didn't bring up Iron Man 3, but they're also shopping around an Agent Carter TV show. And the only reason I say Iron Man 3 is because the Agent Carter short is on the Iron Man 3 home release. Mm. Obviously, but she has, other than that, being on the home release, she has nothing to do with Iron Man. It's, you know, obviously the character from Captain America. Yeah, yeah. So, how do you think, what do you think about that? The Agent Carter becoming its own show. Which, in in turn, she is, right, she is an early agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. In turn, so, yeah, I don't think there's a need for it. Now you really think about it, now that you mention it. Yeah, it's like, isn't that, that's just kind of, maybe that's just something that they're throwing around. Maybe. But now we move on to Arrow. You know, actually, that'd be or a... not. I'm sorry. <laughs> actually, now that I thought about it, that'd be a good, an interesting way of uh, of shooting that early Marvel U and that very Rocketeer... Right, right, right. Fashion. Yeah, invaders. Huh? Oh, all the invaders? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't we tell you to shut up off camera? Yeah, I ignored you. I mean, the the most powerful thing you got going in those days, what is it, like Namor? He's like the strongest... The like, original Torch, Captain America. Well, they... I don't and, know. Uh, Would they Toro do the original Torch? Because even the original... Torch they can eventually no because he has nothing to do with Fantastic Four it, besides name it's it's own separate uh, thing but what if they decide to bring in a Fantastic Four it would have to be on Fox Agent Carter would have to air on Fox I don't think they'd touch it I don't think they'd touch it un- until they actually got the the only re- right. reason we're having this invaders conversation is because somebody doesn't know how to shut up yeah. I just I just like Rocketeer <laughs> you know um, but then it, bring, it brings us to Arrow, uh, who is now entering its second season. It's which, a good show. It's really have you have you watched it? I've watched one episode. Only timing, but um, I'm waiting for Black Friday because I know I'll find the the release pretty cheap. I, I don't get releases. Home. It's kind of take off subject for a second. I did a story the other day. I was thinking about picking it up. They had the DVD of season one for yeah. thirty four ninety nine at Target. Yeah. For thirty nine ninety nine, you can get the Blu Ray on season one. Along with the DVD copies included with it, and along with the digital copy, for five dollars more, not only do you get the same DVD set you would pay thirty four ninety nine, but you get it also on Blu ray and a digital. That Is there a fucking weird. point to that? No, I mean, that, that why wouldn't weird. you just buy the Blu ray then? That's just it, because that's why it's it's to push to to get people into this transition. I guess you know you're you're at that point where the majority of people already have Blu ray, and now you're just getting that that extra. Oomph. Well, I'm just waiting for Black Friday, and I'll pick it up. I know it'll be on sale. But I happened to watch one episode, and I liked it. It was the uh, the Huntress episode where she mm. first debuted or whatever. Um, but no, so with season two with Arrow, they plan on introducing The Flash for a few episodes in order to spin him off into his own show. That's just it. Again, it's like Flash. They did The Flash before, and it worked then. Right. For as cheesy as it was, no, it still yeah. worked. Yeah, okay, why haven't they done that now? Well, they're going to. About time. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Oh, yeah. But do you think... <laughs> Do you think if it flops an arrow that they might pull the plug right away before they start doing this TV show? You can't flop Flash. The guy... The we are speaking about Warner Brothers. Oh, okay. Well... The guy, the company who okay. fired Joss Whedon. If you bring, bring in... You just got to bring in the one Flash who's probably the better contrast to Arrow's personality. You make Flash funny and make him super fast and there you go. Okay. So what do you... Th- now... There's a company whose name escapes me at the moment, and they put out this kick-ass Wonder Woman trailer. There's been a couple of pretty good Wonder Woman but trailers. But the one specifically that's getting all the rounds, where it's no dialogue, it's pure action. Oh, that one? That's like actually not my, one. That's not my favorite Wonder Woman one. That one just got more push because they had more, more money behind it. Right, and that's yeah. the one that Warner Brothers has actually taken notice to. And they're actually, you know, they may have seen the other ones and not gave a, sh- gave a care, but this one is the one that's actually garnering this one did a better job at making noise right so what do you think based off have you watched it yes yes i did so what do you think based well, that's off why this it's trailer? not my favorite one because i don't think the wonder woman fighting it is the best fighting uh in terms of look because that's one of their main problems is how do you put wonder woman on the screen and look and suit wise it's, it's not hard it's not. Give it's her the kind of the Donna Troy look. Where you can give her the star spangled pants. You can give her the works. sexy Greek goddess look and, and body armor. 
you know, it, it worked in Kingdom Come. It it, could, it works in the comics. You know, but do you think she they doesn't? Push? She doesn't. She doesn't always have the armor on. It's more for like the full. That's like full assault. What Wonder Woman? You no, know? you think they should push Wonder Woman, not just Wonder Woman, but Flash as well, to a point to where it's like, okay, if these shows are successful, they should have that actor go into the Justice League, or do you think these are maybe testing waters to see, okay, if their shows are successful, then we can translate it into a movie? Here's the thing, man. Wonder Woman is necessary. It is necessary. You, getting that, you can't the do it girls, the women, it. That, that 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 demograph. Getting that demograph is super necessary. Whichever one of the two companies gets the better hold on it is going to reel in the most cash. And it uh, sucks to talk that way. It does, but it's it's probably the sex smart pig. It's it's probably the smartest way to think about it. It's like the hardest market to grab because this is this is for boys. Comics are uh, for the most part they're for boys. Any, oh any, God! I can see the hate comments now. No, nah, fuck that, man! And all the girls look at them. They're they're don't even have clothes on them. And hey, that's how we like them. <laughs> no problem with that. But <laughs> no, if if you want to pull in uh, that demograph, get a strong female role model that that tears it up alongside next to Superman. You know, Marvel has already jumped on it. They got the Black Widow, and they're kicking ass. All right. So pull your head out of your ass, DC. Word. Word up. So, in closing with this argument, or not even argument, but just discussion, we want to know what you guys think. S.H.I.E.L.D., did you like it? Did you hate it? Why? Why not? Uh, are you looking forward to Gotham, Constantine, Agent Carter, Arrow, and Flash, Wonder Woman, any of these shows we mentioned? Let us know. Comment uh, below. Let us know what you guys think. Moving on. So, wait, wait. But before we move on, though, did you, like the, did you like the S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah, I thought it was good. Like, out of four stars, what would you give it? I gave First it a, episodes. a three. You give it a three? I gave it a three. Cool, man. You got to remember, I don't watch a lot of TV, so whatever I do watch, it's got to be good or I can't yeah. watch it. I like, I like it. it. It was decent. I'll give it a two because I still want Luke Cage and stop, It's still early. Stop with Iron I, I say it's just still early. Yeah. So moving on. Uh, Villains Month. Or excuse me, not Villains Month. I'm skipping ahead. We're going to leave that for last. I want to talk about the contracts in comics. Yeah, man, I want to know, uh, you text me about this, you're like, dude, I, let's talk about contracts, and it's come up, it's it's, it's kind of like found its way in some of our episodes, that Mark Wade actually uh, cast eyes uh, Straczynski, you know, for ha ha being one of the last few exclusive writers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, what gets me, I mean, it doesn't even get me, I just, it's something I noticed, because I, obviously we don't work in the industry like that, so we don't know whose right. contracts are what or what. Last I can remember, this is when Wizard was still, you know, the big shit. It wasn't a magazine format, still comic format. Mm -hmm. And they were discussing, oh, and it was big news to us as fans. We would sit and talk about it. Like, oh, did you hear so-and-so just signed an exclusive deal to Marvel for five years? So imagine the stuff they're going to work on. And mm -hmm. then with DC, and you remember, they were at Marvel and DC were just like, okay, you work for us, that's it. You work for us, that's it. There's no cross-promotion. You were lucky if you even got... To work for them and make your own creator stuff at Image. Yeah. So, in, from what I understand or from what I thought, all this stuff was still in effect because it's not really public knowledge anymore. Since there's no wizard, a lot of people don't report on stuff like this. But lately, I've been seeing a name here and there, like oh, you know, they're DC books. Then suddenly, I'll pick up a Marvel book the same month and see that same name. I'm like, wait a minute. And then you look, and then of course now with Image and the independents taking over a lot more you start to see a lot more freedom. A lot of these guys that are supposedly under contract are still getting their own stuff pushed at these independent publishers. So it's like, is there, um, is there like contracts, any, or excuse me, like mm -hmm. uh, these kinds of contracts where it's just, they're exclusive. Uh, case in point, uh, I read the Swamp Thing villains book um, with, uh, what's his name, Arcane. And uh, I was like, okay, it's a decent book. I like the story. I said, like, who wrote this? Uh, I, excuse, I, if I pronounce the name wrong, I'm sorry. It's Charles uh, Soul with the E at the end. So I don't know if it's Soul or Soleil. But, um, so Is I read that. No. So. Okay, so Charles Soul. And I read it. I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Why does this name look familiar? Bam! He's writing Thunderbolts as well for Marvel. So I was like, wait a minute. He's writing Swamp Thing and he's writing Thunderbolts. You know, I'm like, hmm. Um, the Cuber brothers, they seem to be bouncing back and forth. You know, like, wait a minute. Weren't you just writing, uh, weren't you just drawing some X-Men covers? All of a sudden now you're working on uh, the Damien miniseries for right, right, right. Batman. It's like, so my thing is, are there exclusive contracts anymore? They were just now, are, are the comic companies being more uh, lenient? 
I would think with the way that Marvel and DC are going about this competition now with the new 52 and Marvel now, and it just seems like they're being a lot more aggressive now, that you wouldn't see so many creators going having this leeway to go back. Jonathan Hickman's another one. Yeah, he's not working for DC, yeah. but he's writing quite a few Marvel books and a hell of a lot of his independent books. He's writing for, um, if I'm not mistaken, he's writing for Avatar, a book called God is Dead. He's oh, yeah, also yeah, yeah. writing his image stuff, uh, East of West. He's writing the Avenger stuff. It's just like, okay. Um, there's a lot of ways that that could be looked at. I, I see it as a positive way. Brian Wood. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that's writing fine. for Dark Horse and Marvel. You know, so it's just like, is there an exclusive contract anymore? You know, it's. I don't know. It's just something I thought about lately because I. It, it's just it something I wanted to bring up. No, I, I don't think there's going to be exclusives for a long while. Like, as Mark Wade pointed out, is uh, they don't they wouldn't want anybody on their property long enough to make extreme changes. Okay. They would rather have the rotating cast um, and still keep the executives in charge of the property. Here's an example, then. You got three names that I would think were exclusive. From Marvel, Brian Bendis. Okay. This guy has not touched anything that wasn't Marvel. Even his independent stuff is now being published through Icon. No longer Image. Excuse me. So you would think if anybody's got an exclusive with Marvel, it's him. With DC, I'm not even going to go ahead and say Jeff Johns or Jim Lee because they're in different, they also have different roles behind the scenes, not just comics. But with DC, you've got um, Jeff Lemire. You know, he's a name to look out for. Scott Snyder. You know, so it's like, okay, with these kinds of names... Are they sticking with... Uh, do they have exclusives? It's like, okay, we'll use Bendis, because Bendis is the best example here. With him being on Marvel so long, would you think that he has exclusive, or it's just, I just no, want to be with or here's, or here's the thing. That, that, here's the thing. Um, when you think of someone like like Bendis, or even like a Jeff Loeb, those are pe people who are... who have probably been in the industry long enough where they could manage such large bodies of work and so many characters. If anything... They've probably been on that under that brand for so long because they're they're probably more of a managing mm -hmm. role. You know, it's probably something we won't see. It's probably a contract that we, or a title that we won't see. They're just probably just the writer. Um, but they've, I could see them more being more as treated like like as the employee. You know, these other new these other writers, they probably haven't been out long enough, or they're probably not trusted to handle so much body of work at a single time. Now you've been in and out with reading lately. Oh, well, a lot more than lately, but lately, because of the show, you've been kind of sticking your nose in a couple of books here and there. Do you think that if exclusive contracts existed the way that when we were younger we used to read about, that maybe some of these stories would be a little bit more tighter and they'd be a lot more interesting than some of them are now? Yeah, because man. Because it'd be a lot actually, more, like, focus? If anything, you could just change what the exclusive contract is. You could just you could just say, hey, we're going to have this soul guy. Can we just offer you, like, a six-month contract? Just just do this run for us. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing now. You got someone like DC who has, like, their rotating cast of everything, rotating cast of comics, rotating cast of editors, rotating cast of writers, illustrators. You know they don't even publish 52 because titles anymore? Is that gone? Is that label gone? No, the label's there. It's just they're not publishing 52 titles. Now they're publishing whatever number, but the new 52 is now is what this thing is known as, as opposed to being the publishing thing. Wow. Well, see, okay. It's, it's how they this refer is, this to This is where it. I'm getting at. It's like, I think uh, I would believe that an editor, for the sake of editing, would like to have a team, a set team for a long time, because mm -hmm. it'll help. You know, they don't understand how each other works. It'll, it'll just help a lot. But when it comes down to it, I think there's just an executive who's like, I don't like where this is going. Let's, let's change this team. Okay. I think that's why exclusives don't exist. I really don't but think the, that, that... I would say that affects the story. Because I, you know what? I mean, like, like they if don't you had care, an... Ex man. Obviously, they don't. They don't. Because people are still going to buy the books. But, I mean, in terms of quality... You know, you have the one guy, okay, you're signed for X amount of time to do this book. If that's you, if you know that's all you're doing, that's what your focus is on. I think you're going to go ahead and give it your all as yeah. opposed to, well, I got to write for this, I got to write for this. Oh, they're going to probably throw me off this book anyway. I'm not going to give a shit. I'm not going to write it to we, my we best. We would uh, love that. I think that would be great. But an executive is like, oh, you were doing great, and then this month uh, your book didn't sell so well. Psh guess what you're gone bye yeah where i suppose to having an exclusive be like hey it's written right here keep me on till i'm done with my yeah art. yeah i mean 
exclusive doesn't have to mean total power like it did back back right right in right. our in our readings it could just mean like like hey you just do this run for six months that's that's it just ha- have them finish that story yeah. you know have it, that way it can be tight and then introduce us to and then to maybe the new maybe that way when you get these big names that are relaunching a book <coughs> Sylvestri um what and it's like oh so and so is working on this book and then when you buy it it turns out they only do like the first two issues and then that's it you know this way you get your money's worth so to speak I guess if the quality is there yeah and then nothing wrong with uh, <laughs> Sylvester. I mean, I like the guy. Like you like that, you're, you're like the quality's there. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with him. You know, I like the guy. He's great and stuff. You know, we've met him. Uh, but it's just it, as a fan, you, if you're gonna sell me on anything, oh, so and so is writing this, so and so is drawing this, and this is how you're pushing this new book for that person to be off the book within a month or two. I mean, that's yeah. kind of, you know. You can only blame that creator. You can't blame the editor because you don't know what goes on. So it's like, okay, if you're pushing so-and-so to write this book for me, and now this guy's after two months not writing the book for me, I'm going to be pissed at this guy. Why isn't he writing the book? You so know? just finish your damn runs, people. People, please, finish the runs. No, no, but <laughs> finish the runs. Yeah, finish the runs. No, but I, I totally get you, and I, I definitely agree with that, man. Um, I think executives just got to leave their hands off the red button sometimes you know yeah maybe come maybe a book just takes a dive one month because something else came out yeah that's it you shit know. happens yeah. hey if you guys can bounce back from the 90s you guys can bounce back from a lot of other stuff yeah. right yeah. uh but speaking of 90s and bad gimmicks we now talk about villains month villains month we've discussed it uh, a few episodes ago the one we did at uh, i don't excuse me the number escapes me but it was the episode where we filmed it forever young okay yeah yeah so we touched upon it the, th- the 3d covers yeah but now that the month of september is gone and the promotion is over let's talk the outcome of it like well i would know more than you because you're not in the store i've only read but, a, yeah I've read well, a lot of the from Batman, what you've read Batman ones um uh, were they necessary? Not at all. If anything, if anything, they just mentioned uh, Forever Evil. A lot of the, like the Batman stuff. Mm-hmm. All for the most part, it seemed like they all mentioned Forever Evil. And uh, so I saw, I saw how how there was an opportunity to write something interesting, like um, the the puppeteer one, the Batman. The Trilogy. The Trilogy. Thank you. I lost the word. I was reading that one today. As a matter Talon, of fact, the Talon one was pretty badass. I thought that the was Court pretty of Owls cool. One. Yeah, the Court that of Owls. That was pretty cool. Um, but for the most part, they were just like these one shots that that's what the point was that weren't really necessary. The way the way that I see it was with the zero there issues were epilogues. last year. There were epilogues to other stuff. Unless did prologues, they all prologues, prologues, prologues. Did they all tie in like the, like the Batman no, ones? No, no. See, and this is what I mean. Um, with last year's promotion, yeah, it was yeah. the zero issues, which pretty much told the origins of the heroes in this new Fifty Two universe, which was classic DC which wasn't supposed to happen again in New 52 but they did zero books anyways with the villains month a lot of them were well some of them were origins as well updating yeah. it for the new 52 um, kind of giving you a backstory on some of the villains who are possibly going to play a part in the okay. forever evil storyline which is why certain villains got spotlighted and some didn't um, read some of the books I haven't read them all the ones I some of the ones I read were absolute horse shit so bad totally not worth it um and i'm not even gonna get into the allocations or anything like that. i'm speaking as far as quality wise and story um what out of the ones you read david which ones would you say were like the top ones in your opinion the first one that comes to mind like damn that was pretty good port of Isles. a lot of intrigue I read that there. One yesterday a lot of intrigue because it's the guy uh walk around with uh with his daughter mm-hmm. and he's explaining like the history and how he I like that as he explained it, they had the flashback to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. And it's like you're you're just taking this this little trip with them, mm-hmm. you know. And then that little girl gets hardcore at the end. That, yeah, because that, that was one, great. Yeah. That was great. The way it was. No spoilers on this. <laughs> no, because that was actually a great scene. How out of nowhere the little girl just just she, she just handled gets business. Down, man. Handled and business. we're talking about possibly like an eight year old girl. Yeah, you it know? was kind of um, crazy. But that was really good, and it ties into like like the first talent and and the, his purpose. You know, which I actually I like the the whole Italian thing. It's much. It's actually kind of more refreshing from clones somehow. Now, did you read anything besides some of the Batman books? Uh, I flipped through your your Bane right now, which That's a was Batman book. Yeah, damn it, no. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. I I did the Richard Quest, uh, the Court of Owls, Bane, and uh, I did another one where we're on a trip to Indiana, and it must have been that forgettable. 
whatever John picked up. It must have been that forgettable that Mr. Freeze. He it was a Batman one. I think I would have remembered Mr. Freeze. One of the Flash ones, Grodd maybe. Oh 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 oh. Um, no, it was a Superman one. Freaking uh, Bizarro. Ah, uh, that was dumb. <laughs> that's my re- that's my complete review. <laughs> that's my complete review. <laughs> All right. Um, no, some of them are good. The Bane one doesn't really tie into Forever Evil itself. It ties into the Forever Evil Arkham War miniseries that's coming out. Oh, okay. I saw. Yeah. Because uh, you see at the, the end, the he's prison. going to Gotham and like by boat and everything. He's, and he kills that little. Girl, he basically which I spent was the crazy. entire issue taking over a boat. Pretty much. Yeah. And switching his outfit. Yeah, and saying people follow me. Yeah, I don't ask them to follow me, but they follow. Yeah, it was very like like nineteen eighties action movie actually. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't have a problem with it. Um, some of the ones I I I will say I absolutely should have never seen print at all. Two come to mind. Which one? First one. Bizarre. Doomsday. So oh. I didn't read. I didn't read Bizarre. The Doomsday <laughs> issue. Complete horseshit. First of all, the book is not even about Doomsday. Yeah, go figure, right? <laughs> um, the book takes place on ancient Krypton, where you have Kal El's parents and you have Supergirl's parents. Right, right. And Superman's mother is telling a story of how she used to be on the Royal Guard or whatever, okay. like for the House of El. And there was an invasion that Doomsday was in, and how she helped to take Doomsday down. Now that he was in, or was it his race? So no, it was. It was, it was like somebody that. somebody unleashed Doomsday. On Just that one specific Doomsday? That's what they focused on. Okay. And, like, she kind of helped to take Doomsday down, you know? It was, like, this big catastrophe on their planet. Um, so she helped take him down, and that's what that was. So he was only told, in, he was only seen in flashbacks. So while they're discussing this, a young Supergirl is in her bedroom overhearing the story that her parents are talking to, to her and her uncle. So her father, Supergirl's father, comes in. And consoles her, and she's like, "It's just a story, you know. Yeah, it happened, but you don't have to worry about it. Everything is in the, the Phantom Zone now." And he points to the wall in her bedroom where the fucking Phantom Zone door is. She shares a room with the Phantom Zone. That's fucking creepy. And he's all like, "You don't have to worry about anything anymore. Everything's fine, honey. Go back to bed. It's just a story. Nothing can get you." The Phantom Zone is at the foot of her bed, so to make it worse. After he leaves, the Phantom Zone activates, and here comes Zod's spirit or whatever. He's like, yeah, why don't you tell your father the truth, that I'm secretly talking to you, and I'm the cause of your fears, and blah, blah, blah. And she's all like, I don't like this. This is scary. So pretty bad (laughs) plotting. That was the Doomsday issue. That doesn't make sense. Exactly. Which was why it's one of my two hateful books that I why read. Not, why not take the time to explain how Superman still died in the new 52, you know? in the Doomsday issue? You know, something, you know, like, something involved in <laughs> Doomsday other than we helped defeat the monster. And he's there like in a flashback. No, I, 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 I can't accept that. I don't get how she shares a bedroom with the Phantom Zone. Wait, wait. So who are the the rest of the fighters? Like you have the one Doomsday, and then who are the rest of the? I don't even remember. That doesn't make sense. Because the thing that actually got me, besides her sharing a room with the Phantom Zone, is that it was to me a Zod story. See, I wouldn't have made it that far. I wouldn't have made it that far. I'm like, wait, where's the? Because we were introduced to the entire race of Doomsday. I I I forget their race, the name of their race, but uh, Doomies. I don't know. Doomies. (laughs) All the Doomies. But like, (laughs) this is not a Doom. This is a Zod and Supergirl issue. I don't yeah. get it. It was like okay, okay. Why am I on, with it? Moving on, away from bad plotting. Okay, what's so your number two? I, the hyped book of the month, the Joker's daughter. If you thought the Doomsday was bad, two words, or not even two words, but I'm sorry, you know. I thought you were but, actually going to say the Joker one what, about the monkey. No, oh, I read that one. Hey. It's a Batman book. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> no, Batman The Dark Knight 23.4, Joker's daughter. Okay. My problems with it. First, she's not actually the Joker's daughter. Oh, that's... She's just some deranged chick who was born pretty much with a silver spoon in her mouth and decided that ugly is the new beautiful because her parents were giving her too much attention. So she decides to cut off half of her, like, just cut up and scar half of her face. Okay. But they never really show her face. So she decides she's going to go live underground because that's where, like, I guess all these people have retreated to the Gotham Underground. So she became a Morlock. Pretty much. All right. 
so she goes under there, and in the water, she just happens to find Joker's face floating in the water. So she decides, you know what? He won't mind if I borrow this, and she puts it on. And then she finds these people who are the Morlocks, mm. who are dwelling under here. Now, the women are catering to the men in this underground society. As it should be. So, she, dude... <laughs> I just want to go out and point that while just continue I have your made story. some know where comments I'm coming before, from. David's being very sexist, and I have nothing to do with it. Right. And neither does They're the rest okay. of Comics Remix. So, moving on. So the men, the, excuse me, the women are catering to the men and everything. Case in point, and if, if I'm correct, it's almost one of the quotes: "The women cook and clean the rats. The men eat the rats. The women get the scrapes." So in the turn into demolition man. Yeah. Okay. So. She sees hey, oh, what's going this on. This is Demolition Man. She sees what's <laughs> going on. So Dennis Leary is down there. Probably. Wasn't Ice Cube out. there too? Ah, uh, Demolition. No, Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes? No, no, no. Avoiding well, taxes. Well, no. That's well, why he's there. Oh, Jesse Ventura. I'm talking about like the oh. crew. So Jesse Ventura is down there. Uh, <laughs> He's the governor of the yeah. underground. Anyway, um, so she puts the face on and she's just like, why are the women being controlled? The women should rise up and take power. So she goes to some of the women in these camps and says, why don't you guys rise up? Say no, you know, to the men. You guys take over. So there's this one guy who pretty much runs shit down there and he wears this coat made out of pennies, I believe. And whoever wears this coat of the pennies, Kappa. I don't know. He looks like Thor in a weird way. But this guy, whoever wears this coat of pennies becomes the leader, you know. So everybody's happy and content with this guy being the leader because he's a fair guy. Um, so she's like, she takes an army of women behind her, and they go beat up their husbands and boyfriends and everything. And then the husbands and boyfriends go to the penny guy, and they're like, hey, um, we've decided we want to let the women take over for a little while. And he's all like, why? Oh, because we feel it's necessary, and they deserve a chance and everything. Oh, does anybody else feel different about it? And then she steps up. She's like, well, they say you're in charge. I'm going to take your coat, and I'm going to be in charge. And then they fight, and she ends up beating them. So she exiles him and she puts the coat of pennies on it. Now she's the new ruler of Gotham Underground. Wow, way to sell it, Junior. That's how it was. Sounds pretty bad. You want to know who wrote it? No. Yes. And no SETI. Oh, that's the <laughs> Your Facebook post. For those of what he's talking about, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> a couple weeks ago on Facebook, I wrote, I says, Dear DC, please stop letting And No SETI write your comics. Thank you. Dear Marvel, please do not hire Anne Rosetti. Thank you. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Her, like, okay, her writing isn't super bad. It's just the, the um, I don't want to say delivery either, but the way she, she uh, presents it, I guess, it's very lackluster. It seems like it's missing something. It's very bland. Her writing is very bland. And it kind of does some jumping <laughs> yeah. where it doesn't feel like a natural transition. Between the like, uh, characters, she just kind of uh, jammed it in this issue, like something like that. But it's like not not just that, but like I said, the transition. Like it doesn't feel when you when you read a conversation between two characters, it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel fluid. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's like jumping, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's very staticky. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Anybody who's read Andosetti's work that know me personally can kind of relate to what I'm saying. You you know what I mean? So yeah, that's fucked up. Um, yeah, so those were the two worst books I read out of Villains Month. I, like, I haven't read them all, though. Yeah, but that sounds pretty bad. Yeah. I still go on to say, why was Kara sharing a room with the Phantom Zone? I don't know. It's at the foot of her bed on the wall. How do you sleep at night? I don't know who designed that house, but obviously they didn't. They forgot about the Phantom Zone. Shit, we're having a kid. Where did we no, throw her in that room? Like, they designed the house like... Put it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> Just pick a room. Yeah. Um, now, moving on to the retailer side of this whole 3D debacle. Well, on top of that, you know, if anybody else had, had some good or bad experiences with Villains Month, feel free to, uh, to chime in on the wall. Yes, please. And uh, if you haven't already, check out Brian's, uh, Adam's reviews on some of these 3D books. Uh, he went ahead and reviewed some of them. He was very honest in his opinions. And yeah, it's funny because very non-biased, yeah. He gave... The Joker's Daughter and Doomsday Reviews as well. So go. I'm not even going to tell you what he thought. Just go. You're going to have to check those out on your own. But moving on to the ra the uh, the retailer side of things. Um, DC, I guess you can say it's a slap in the face to retailers as well as fans. Oh, you're talking about the letter? 
uh, not just the letter, but yeah, yeah, the letter that they sent, it's on Diamond site and everything, where they're touting the sales success that they had for the month of September, where they had more than 50% of the market. They, oh, it was a huge success. Thank you so much. You know, it made so much seated expectations as far as the dollar amount that we thought we'd make and blah, blah, blah. Well, no shit. But too bad the retailers couldn't be such a major part of it. As you know? Could have been. I mean... For something like this, how do you... Okay, you promise one thing, but you can't deliver, and then you want to go ahead and say, it was great. We, we did a great job. Thank you to everybody. They're, they're trying to save face, but they actually kind of like stepped on their toes. They screwed it up. Even worse, if you really want to spit in somebody's face, the month of February is planning... DC is planning to release all 52 3D covers once more as a set for $200, but they're going to be second printings. But you know what? Now that they came out, not all of those covers were great. No, they were not. No. Some, of them some were, were a lot cooler than I thought they'd be. Some were absolute garbage. Yeah, some were like, why is this 3D and why isn't this 3D? Like, like some of them, like, I don't mm -hmm. know. Like, how do they... Well, they were all 3D, them? but they were like, oh, they're lenticular. But instead of saying lenticular, they're like, they're 3D no, no. motion. Exactly. Which some of them really didn't have very much motion to them. But I, I, I could be, maybe I was just being picky because... I do this for a living too, but I felt like like sometimes they were like, just make it lenticular. Doesn't matter what objects on the cover you're making, right. you know, you're giving movement to. Just just give it movement. Like it, they could have been executed a little bit better. What do you guys think? Did you guys get your hands on some of these 3D covers? If so, where'd you get them? Were they easy to find? Are you still missing some? What do you, do you think? DC screwed the retailers over in turn, screwing you guys over. Let us know your opinions. Of course, post down below. Let us know on Twitter and Facebook. Um, that's all I got for this one, man. Yeah. So moving on, go ahead. Our next segment we're moving into is the spotlight, where we go ahead and show you some more footage from uh, our visit to Indiana. Is a one-on-one -on -one interview with David and uh, Mark Wade. This was prior to the Man of Steel argument from last episode's breaking the fourth wall. We got a little intimate in this one, um, but that when he was on breaking the fourth wall. I wish that went on a little longer, and I hope to continue that conversation online. Man, you gotta wait online. No, man. We're I going to his store next year. Oh, that's right. That's true. No, that's but that's next year. I feel like this is a conversation that could just keep going. Hit him up. I you got his info. So, thank you guys. Uh, moving on. Spotlight. So, after Spotlight, we've got our second episode of Carrie's uh, Collector's Corner. Be sure to check that out, where we got... Uh, Collector's case. Is it collector's case? collector's case? I thought it was collector's case. I already did the whatever. logo. Don't find it. I'm not going to change it. I'm not changing the logo. That shows you how much I care. Yeah. I'm just kidding, Gary. No, but thank you um, very much, Mark Wade, for sitting down with us. We really appreciate it, man. So, yeah, coming up, Spotlight, Mark Wade interview, followed by a collector's case segment by Carrie and our special guest for that, Alex Martinez. Alex, thank you for opening your house to us for that Thank one. you very much, man. We so, really appreciate um, that. So, guys, check it out. We'll be back after uh, you watch these segments. Hello everybody, I'm David Sanchez, here with uh, Comic Book Encyclopedia, Mark Wade. <laughs> That's me. Thanks for having us here. My pleasure, absolutely. How many times do you get that, the encyclopedia Three shake? or four times a day, all the time. Do you would, like sit down at a food court and some random guy walks up to you and be like, hey, who's this guy? This has happened just today at the show. People have come by and gone, who is this character? Oh, I know that. That's I don't know my senator. Like at name. a bus stop. Exactly. Oh, you yeah. reach over, hey. Hey, who is this? Yeah. Who is this guy? Definitely. Yeah. So you have a lot of great things going on. Next week is the opening. Yeah. Of your first comic book store. Exactly. Do you want to tell us more about that? How you actually got in a brick and mortar it's store? The only, yeah, it's the only part of comics I've not done yet. Like, I've, you know, I've done everything. I've been a publisher. I've been an artist. I've been a writer. I've been, you know, I've done everything short of putting the staples in the comics. But this was the, like the last frontier. Is that why you did it? The, yeah, it's kind of, that's a big part of why I did it. Because, well, the bigger part is I keep saying, and I believe this, that digital comics and print comics can coexist nicely and feed off each other and I believe that's true and all the trends say it's true but I can't prove it I can prove it with digital but because with Thrill then I've got my own digital site but yeah, yeah. since I don't have a brick and mortar thing that I control it's all theory until I get in there boots on the ground and really you know work it and and I really I, I didn't want to buy a comic store just as a vanity thing and say oh I bought a comic store and I come in you know two so times a year okay so we're talking about this marriage of print and digital yeah where is the digital gonna be in your store. That's what we're, well. What we can do is we can have 
we're, we're you know we're setting up monitors where we can actually have the digital stuff up and you know have it be seen all the time, and then have handouts to give people or QC codes to give people with their phones and stuff. You come to the store. We can work s certain promotions where if you want to buy something off of the Thrillbent site, like a yeah, downloadable, yeah, yeah. but enter a code, you know, for Alter Ego Comics or something, then maybe you can, you know, you can get a discount. So we're talking like, like download station slash promo. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing going exactly. on. Exactly. Okay, that's interesting. We're going to try. Interesting to play we're, off we're, I'm willing to try pretty much anything. I mean, Thrillbent, the whole point of Thrillbent was to experiment. The whole point of Thrillbent was not to make money. It was, although, you know, we want to break even. Yeah. But the whole point is, let's just let's experiment and throw out a bunch of different things and see what works. Now with Thrillbent, that that is your label. Yeah. That, that is your label. You yeah. have you have. It's not just you writing. You have yeah. a lot of writers on there. A couple of things about pandas going on in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, but yeah. that's cool. Hey. Yeah. Um, now, how has it been owning and running your label versus like the other big labels having their own digital it, comic stuff? It, how has it been being the indie? It's been great being the indie because the beauty of being the indie is if you're doing stuff for Marvel or DC, and again, especially at Marvel, I gotta say, it's been great to work with, and I'll always still do print comics at Marvel as long as they'll have me, and some of the other publishers I work with. But but the bigger the, bigger the publisher, the bigger the battleship. So, yeah, okay. in other words, if you wanna try something new, or experiment, or try some new business model, or, you know, play around with pricing or something, if you're working at DC or Marvel, it's like steering a battleship. Yeah. I mean, I was the editor-in-chief of Boom Studios up until, what, two, three years ago, and one of the reasons I left there amicably was just, look, I want to do some digital stuff, and at that point, brick and mortar retailers were really up in arms about digital. They were convinced that digital was going to sink everything. The fear. Very the fear. fear. And I understand the fear, but I, it was unjustified, but I understand the fear, but what I said was, I, the problem is I can't do that as a boom guy, because then the retailers will retaliate by not ordering boom books. And they won't not order my books, but they'll not, like, not order some of the other books. I don't want to punish the other employees. I mean, we had like 25 people working there. I don't want to punish my employees because right. I have a point of view. So I had to leave to go independent. But, I mean, there's no funding. That is the scary part. You're all, it's all the tightrope. You're on, you know, with no net. It's all you, and you put your, yourself on the line. But i got to say, the reward is that you get to do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always a trade-off when you're... Yeah. Well, you're you know, you're doing your own thing. But now let's let's give ourselves like a situation here. Yeah. You're watching these generations go through the stores or buying these comics. Yeah. And uh, more and more things are becoming digital. And that's yeah. probably your point of view and your thing about like digital yeah. comics is that yeah. they are the future. Yeah. Um, so what happens to the retailer? Yeah. Do the what, what do they do to compete? What the retailers do to compete is first off, you they need you know, the good ones are, are, have already already sort of moved in this direction. You're not so much a periodical comic book store, although you, you know there's always room for that. But you need to exp you know the good ones know to expand to be more of a pop culture place. Not that you know not that you're selling stuff that's so off comics that you're no longer a comic store. Right, right. But there's no reason you can't sell like related merchandise. You can't sell more graphic novels because everybody still loves the feel of something in their hand. I mean, digital is great, and I love digital comics. But it still can't replace, you know, sitting under a tree in a park, you know, with a book, and it feels good. Um, that's one thing they can do. The other thing they can do is, co is comic stores become the gateway to the community. Like, it's one thing for me to use digital as an outreach tool for fans who aren't near comic stores, who are, like, in the middle of nowhere, but I still have to find a way to get to them. Right. Comic stores are already that gateway. If there's a comic store anywhere near you, they create these this sense of community, the sense of giving fans a chance to come in together and talk with each other about what they like. Yeah, yeah. And spin off that way. I mean, at, at Alter Ego, our store, we're doing stuff all the time. We're, we're doing, we're, we've got a bunch of events scheduled. We're like ladies' night on, you know, like once a month. Where what's just, what's seriously, ladies' night? No, 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 no. So what's just, ladies' night? It's really just like you're, you're, you're a girl and you like comics, but you are, you don't want to, you don't want to feel like you're with a bunch of guys who are going to make you feel bad about, or are they okay. going to give you the geek girl test or stuff. If you just want to hang out with other girls who like comics, that's ladies' night, you know. Or we're going to have a lot of kid-centric events. We're going to have a lot of community outreach stuff. There's a PBS uh, special on superheroes that's coming out mid-October, uh, and I did some some work on that. I, like I did a lot of camera stuff for that. But whether I did or not, that's not the point. The point is that we're going to be running 
we're going to be showing that at the store, and we're having a lot of the local university professors come in just to, you know, and make it an event. And that way they see that, they get to spread the word. Yeah, that's, that's uh, very interesting because uh, as, as, I guess, a consumer, yeah. going through comic shops, I've seen the, the all the different types of boutique style comic shops. That's what I call them. I call yeah. them boutique style when they're trying to like, specialize in certain things. But yeah. I've seen uh, uh, the comic book shop that has the cafe in it. Yeah, yeah. The comic book shop um, that has galleries in it. Actually, Challengers on, on oh, West Hollywood. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. yeah. that's actually kind of reminds me of what you just said, yeah. which has been probably the most interesting concept to Visible. me. It's like yeah. you're giving back to the people who, in a way, you're giving back to them. Like you're, 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 you're giving them the artists slash the writers their moment, yeah. their spotlight, yeah. because you know they are contributing to. And you, you, know, what and you're you doing. just want to make the store a friendly, inviting place to hang out at and to talk to other people. We have we have a big board up on the wall, big uh, dry erase board where people are encouraged to write down what they're reading right now. Like yeah. if you, so everybody has a recommendation. If you even if you're just like if you're a regular customer of the store. You know, just tell what do you want to recommend to other people. We have a I couch, really like we have, that. We have a couch in the in the in one of the rooms where you can just you know sit with your kids and stuff and go. And it's near the kids section, so you can sit with your kids and go over the kids stuff. It's definitely a uh, a turn for the better. I mean, what I remember when I was a kid it was like the dungeon comic oh, the shop. the stores. The dungeon so the, comic shop yeah. was like all the guys and the yeah. very old like like kind of a guy. Yeah, and we, we sometimes yeah. and there's we no would go from like sassy to angry really I know. quickly. And, and there's like no natural light because all the windows are covered with posters from the death of yeah. Superman that are ten years old and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. Rape, rapey stores. Yeah, so exactly. I definitely like it if if the competition is creating this new type of comic shop. Yeah. it's definitely welcoming. Hey, look, I just think. It, the, what digital does is it allows you that that outreach to all the communities that are not within a hundred miles of a comic store, of which there are so many. But then what the stores do is they they allow the fans then to congregate and give them a chance to because there's still no substitute yeah. for online's great, but there's still no substitute for that one-on-one -on -one sort of. Hey, what do you read? The personal. Yeah. Uh, you know, the personal yeah, touch, exactly. The personal touch. Man. I just think they can work together that way. Now going back into throw bent, yeah, yeah, this is your label. You're running it. Do you, are you sort of like, uh, I guess this is the only way I, I could actually envision it or when I try to explain it. Like yeah. you, you are like the image comic books. Like do you, yeah. do you recruit other writers? Like what, what, what is the deal like? The deal, it's your, it, yeah. A, a writer or illustrator is coming up with their yeah. creative. Yeah. They want to go on through. Yeah. Bent. What's the process? It's a, it's a really simple process. There's basically, there's two forms of, there's like two divisions. There's the stuff like Moth City, like uh, Damnation of Charlie Wormwood. Uh, there's a couple of others like that where it's, the, the, all the creators are doing it on their own. We don't, Thrillbin doesn't have any sort of financial stake in it. And all we ask is that, you know, put it up on the site. If we, and we make a deal with them, like if we sell like downloads through the storefront or something, if we, if we make any profit off of your comic through the storefront, then give us a little bit of a cut, not much. Just give a little bit of a cut. There's a there's a contract, right? Like this, yeah, this is a contract, our cut. Yeah. But this, I'm just giving, yeah, but I'm just giving you the base, the basics of the contract. We just we want to, we want a little piece of what it is of what money you make off the site. Okay. Other than that, you're on your own. So you so you guys aren't very selective. What comes up? It's just no, like uh, I, like what was the selectiveness? The come selectiveness from? is the selectiveness is, and this actually gets more into the stuff where there's the other there's the other track where Thrill Bent will put some money in. To, to the artist and to the colorist and so forth, to the production of it, to help it see fruition. Really? That's pretty cool. It is pretty, I think uh, it's pretty cool. Great job. It's, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's, 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 you know, we know we're not gonna make that money back anytime soon, but we will eventually make that money back. And so until that point, it's a, it's a straight 50-50 split on profits between it, but you still own everything. Yeah. But it's at that point, if we put money in, then it's a straight 50-50 straight split on profits until we reach such a point where you've earned out what we put in and then a little, again, a little bonus because that's what, you know, just to, for the time and effort we put But now that it. you've invested into it, now how have things become as far as deadlines? Like, like, just, yeah, no, no, yeah, seriously, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You, you've invested, you put money into yeah. it, like, okay, we need to see your, your if you're gonna be bi-monthly, or like, how yeah. does that set, like, what, like what we, we, you need to stay on schedule. What, yeah, what we tell people is we need, we, we, we like it to be weekly, if you can do it. I mean, we're willing to experiment with monthly, we're willing to experiment with other forms, but weekly we like. 
and we just tell people, look, we need X number of them in the can. We need like eight or ten or something of them in the can, ready to go, on you know, on the servers, so that there's no if you if somebody does get the flu, you know, if somebody does something, you know, if something goes wrong, we can we can build in. A so weekly, you are looking for full timers, like you know, like you got you got to yeah. get into. It. Is that because it's, it's digital and yeah. and, 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 and because there's I, speed related to yeah, digital? And I like the the recurring nature of. I, I wanted I wanted Thrillbent to be something where there was something brand new up every day. Okay. That was important to me because that I, I don't want people coming back like once a, if they come back once a week the thing is then they'll forget next week. Or they'll wait they'll wait another month or something and they'll come back. I wanted that that you know rat a tat tat of something new every week. Online content yeah. driven, yeah. so so all exactly. these things kind of follow. And then in terms of the selectivity of it, it really is you know, I mean, I, I clearly I went to my friends and and the people I knew could do the job first, uh, but we've also taken stuff over the transom, not a whole lot because we just it's really just me and a couple of other people and I got a full time job. I don't know if you know this, so uh, I was not uh, aware yeah. of this. Yeah, look at so, this stuff. I, so yeah, I so no this idea. is so like Thrillman is like nights and weekends, and there's only so much bandwidth I personally have to go through like a bunch of slush pile stuff. I would like to get there eventually. But but still, I'm still selective. It's not like anything you. It's not like I'll put up anything because I want it. It has to use the form well. That's yeah. the most important thing. Like again, you know, this is portrait. That's awesome. That's a portrait format book, but it looks like crap on a computer screen because it does. You get this, and you got to scroll down and get that, and you flip the page and get this. You got to scroll down and get that, and it's not made for that. Where the where all the thrillbent digital comics are the same ratio as your as any screen out there. It's all that landscape stuff. So all the artwork and the whole page is on your screen, your iPad, your your laptop, all at once. So that you can you know you can read the whole thing and not have to worry about oh did I miss something? I got to scroll around. You know. As far as interactivity, yeah, because web it's it's there should oh, be yeah. a lot to interactivity. Yeah. What what have your thoughts been on that? Like, oh, what have, what have you thought about like how can we make these web comic with these web comics jump a lot more? We got well in the. In the digital downloads that we sell, when we, when we sell PDFs, um, we make sure that there's embeddable code, not only in like the, the hyperlinks in there, but but like like here's the backstory on. You want to you want to read the backstory in this character? Hit this link, and then you know, out of the comic, it'll take you right to the you know to a, a page that'll give you the backstory. Or ideally, what we want to do, if you build up enough material on the web, it should be oh, you want the backstory on this character? Touch like the character himself, and that right. will take you to another adventure, like another another layer of that character's adventure. Just stuff. boxcar kids. Exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> or there's a, or there's another one. We're playing with this. We're going to eventually release an app, and we've just the only reason it's slow is because again we're nights and weekends. But uh, the app is so cool because what it does is it allows you, like here's the comic, right? And you're and you're scrolling right and left. But if you scroll up and down instead, you'll get like here's the comic. If you scroll down, you get here's just the pencils. Or like here's just the inks. Like here's the process thing. So you can Very sort of see here's just the script and here's some notes on it and stuff. So you get to you know this is how you read the comic. Like special features. Yeah, but special features is like on you know if this is the X axis, then on the Y axis you get all the special features nice. and stuff. Um, that was introduced to us by uh, two kids in uh, in web comics that do something called Ninjasar, and they've got a process called Breakdown. That does that, and, and when they showed it to me in Baltimore last year, it's just that's amazing. Wow, new things coming out of Thrillbent, man. That sounds I, great. Dude, I, this is it's all about new stuff, you know. That's great. So, do you want to tell the viewers where we could get everything? Can you yeah. tell us about Thrillbent? How to get out Thr there? Yeah, Thrillbent.com. Easy to find. Sorry, I'm like Thrillbent. That's right. Thrillbent. <laughs> Thrillbent. <laughs> Thrillbent. Everything for uh, everything is there to be read for free. You know, new comics every day. I've got a weekly series called Insufferable about what happens when your sidekick as a crime fighter turns out to be a complete douchebag. Um, there's a great one on Friday called The Damnation of Charlie Wormwood, which is a crime book that if you like Breaking Bad, you will love Damnation of Charlie Wormwood. Uh, there's, they're all over the spectrum. We've got horror comics, we've got humor comics, we've got adventure comics. We have very few superhero comics because that, you know, that, that's pretty well taken care of in, yeah. in, by Marvel and DC. So the whole point of doing this is to try to break into different genres. Yeah. yeah, cool. Mark, thanks a lot for no, being here. No, my pleasure. Absolutely. You bet. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Junior, when did Batman and Steel have a baby? Junior, hey. Oh, my fault. What's up, dude? What are you listening to, man? Spinner Rack, dude. You ever heard of Spinner Rack?
Oh, what's the Spinner Rack? Spinner Rack is a brand new podcast hosted by Big B, Brian Adams, and myself. Now on iTunes and at the spinnerrack.podbean.com. Check it out for the latest in all your great comic book conversations. Sounds great. Hey guys, it's Kerry with a new show, Collector's Case. This is my buddy Alex. Alex, How's thanks for having us. Thank you. Why don't you uh, show off your collection a little bit here? Well, so, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So, how long have you been collecting for? I've been collecting for probably about 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. Now, anything specifics or primarily just. Started you know, off with uh, Transformers Generation 1, G.I. Joe, uh, He Man. And uh, go bots. Now what? Go, nice. Go yeah. Now this was all stuff from your childhood. Yeah, stuff growing up as a kid on TV at the toy store. It's like everyone else. That's so, how you started. So you just you just rehunted yeah, things down. Yeah, I, I, I was born at a great time because everything. I was just the right age to catch everything. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's nice. So you have a nice collection here. So I thought we'd start this segment over here. Okay. Now what do you got up on this wall here? Primarily well, up here, it's mostly the DC line. Uh, a lot of. Um, Different characters like uh, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. Pretty much, uh, they all came out around uh, four or five years ago. I just started grabbing them as they came out. Now, was now when you bought these, were these ones that you just they caught your eye and said, "I have to have them," or was there specific reasons why you like those particular characters of that line? Well, like like growing up, uh, you, everyone liked Superman, Batman, and then you kind of met all the other characters along the line. Uh, one of the side characters I liked the most are like Bane, recently. Uh, well, the Joker, even though he's not, a, he's, a, he's, he's a, there for he's you. awesome. Yeah, I love he's the Joker. Awesome. Yeah, big Joker fan. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool. The the USS Reliance. Uh huh. Yeah. Now, what what is what is that? That's it's a it's not a blueprint. It, it's a, a schematic for a model, and I think it just told you where to put the stickers. Okay. But it was uh, the other side had a French version. Instead of saying showing the paint, I just it looked like a schematic. Yeah, so I it just looks put cool. it on a frame. It's one of my favorite ships. I'm a big Star Trek fan also. Uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica. When you look around the room, you'll be able to tell that I pretty much like everything. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so we got this stuff behind you here. Mm -hmm. So this is what we, we've got. This is more Battlestar stuff, right? This yeah. Starships. Uh, big DS9 fan. So that was my one of my favorite shows. Had to collect the dolls. That's a great show. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I love Battlestar Galactica original series. And the new was good. This is just some stuff that I had that was open that I wanted to display. Big Marvel guy too. I do. Now like I saw the I saw the ships. Now are these are these models or what specifically are these? Because I don't recognize they're, these. They're they're basically toys, but they have that model feel. Okay. You know, yeah, they're the they are we're made to play with. You know, when they came out, they're like fifteen bucks. Uh, but yeah, they're just very detailed, so they have that model. Fit. And then you've got the the die casts. Yeah, the Titanium series. Yeah. Uh, now was that that was the original series that came out, right? Yeah, the first the first launch of those. Yeah, and I I, I love fleets. Anytime you could get about thirty or forty ships, no matter what the genre, I like collecting multiples. Just have it. I always wanted to put them out, but you know how it is. It's very cool. And uh, you've got these little shelves. Mm -hmm. Now what what are these are these anchored into the wall? What exactly did you do to kind of uh, these are rips? these are little four dollar shelves you can get at IKEA. They have two holes you just screw right into the wall, man. Right. Very simple, very easy, and they're a nice touch, especially when you want to focus more on the toy than the actual. Well, shelf. I actually like the little lip too, so your guys aren't always falling yeah. forward. That's a nice little touch. Yeah. So now what's on this wall? You've got your ships, and I know some stuff up top. Up top, a few generation one. This was more of a where can I put it because I didn't have it. <laughs> okay, you built. Yeah, so you stacked. I'm a huge uh, Warriors fan, so I love the movie. Came out in '79, so anything that comes out with the Warriors, I try to find. Uh, some uh, reissued Transformers Generation One stuff up there. Um, over here too. Also, we have some uh, Generation One Metroplex, some reissued Transformers. The the big. Uh, Bumblebee, that was pretty nice. Had a lot of effects. I just never got around to opening it. Nice. It's like a now, big now, on this wall, too, I noticed you've got a, a real cool display case. Uh huh. Now, these are awesome. Um, and you've got what? You've got your ships in here and some Transformers? Yeah, a little bit of different stuff here. Here's the Transformers uh, from the first movie that came out with uh, Michael Bay. This, the basically just the original five that I like. Some Voltron, the die cast, and then the 19. 
uh, 92 version. Um, down there, I got a bit nice statue of Unicron that I love. This is also stuff that I want to pull out more centerpiece, but it's kind of hard. You know? Okay. Now, a case like this, where do you get something like this? Because they're really cool. Um, they're great for collectors. Where do you? Where did you get like something These like that? These also come from IKEA. Sixty bucks. Real easy to build. Uh, they make the pieces look nice. Make them look like a showpiece. Anything you put in there automatically looks cool. And they're pretty. They're pretty sturdy, right? Yeah, yeah. You put them against the wall, and you're fine. You're good to go. And then it also gives you a shelf on top, like you can see. So where you can you stack. Throw everything up to the top. Yeah. So now, and what do we have up here? We have the Transformers. Transformers, is the, like I said, the reissue line. Then I just kind of carried it over onto this side. So my Marvel, some Thundercats. I'm also a huge fan of Thundercats. I'm happy that they re made some of the original uh, toys. I kind of so wish so, they... So, so, so uh, those are reissues? All reissues and then just, uh, I think they canceled this line, but they're continuing that line, so that's pretty good. That's the Mesco version, the 14 inch versions. Real affordable, real right. good sculpting. It's a good piece to collect if you're into Thundercats and uh, real cheap and affordable, and when you open them, they just pop. Man. Now what Now what primarily is this wall? It's a lot of loose figures. Primarily this wall is everything that I really enjoy. Uh, okay. The DC Universe statue line, I love the figures. They're really cheap. They're full body, painted well. All of the stances are really cool. Uh, the, of course, the Superman uh, opening up his shirt, I think that's just one of the coolest statues they ever made. Uh, I love the Marvel icons. They were, they were really cheap, real affordable, and they look really cool. And I love that they're already, oh, you could see them. So I didn't have to open them. I just didn't want to it. I didn't. I didn't think they'd end up becoming as expensive as they are, but I just like them the way. They're they nice look. pieces. They're nice they sculpts. Are. Down here is more of my Generation One Transformers. Uh, some of the Beast Wars. Beast Wars actually got a lot of people back into Transformers. Okay. Because I was in high school, like a senior, and it just brought back. A, I think it brought back a lot of people, and then new people into Transformers. Now, and I also noticed you got. You, not everything's in boxes. You got some yeah, loose figures out yeah. here. What you collect both, right? You're one of those guys. I do. Just, okay. Yeah, this is all the Generation One stuff. One of my favorite pieces is uh skyfire okay this so is beat up it's not complete <laughs> it's yellow but it's my favorite now and why is that bad boy your favorite uh because i i remember just being young i had uh i had the five aerial bots and this guy liked them and i i love this guy he just <laughs> he was a fighter jet he right was, he's now where huge. did where did you where did you get that guy from did you like i traded it i traded really? it at, uh i think i was seven we did an even trade i had all the pieces so you saw that there's one of the original guys so. oh yeah this is uh, i remember when that kid actually had bought it but i would not even buy this again new it's just this particular piece. That Did you get a fair deal on it? Did you I, at least feel you got you, the yeah, guy? The oh, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care about the Iron <laughs> Boss. No, this is awesome. the piece, and then this has such a great uh, emotional attachment. Like This is the one I actually That was feel. the one. So I see, okay. it, I see it now. People are selling it in Mint and Box. You know, they want like two, three hundred, but right. I, I want this one. Like I don't even care. Right. Like, it's this yours. Is it's yours. This is pretty much what started everything. Because this was the first thing and the only thing I think I still have from back then. And every time I see that, and it's part of the old Robotech line, and right. they just made really cool stuff back then. So, so you, so once again, you did start over. You didn't. That's one of the few that you still had from your childhood. Yeah, I mean, and then everything else you basically we yeah. Bought. I mean, I think a lot of collectors, unless they're really lucky and they had their parents put all the stuff away, nice. Yeah. They, a lot of, <laughs> they're looking right. for the original. But me, I was like, I had the original. If it's something I really like, I'll take. But I don't need to have it. I like all the new stuff, technology, and all the new toys that they make. Better sculpting, better paint. Right. See, I'm, a, I'm an old school guy. I want the retro. I, 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 I'm both. <laughs> I'm both. I love like stuff like this, but I also like I could appreciate the new stuff, the new technology, and then it's it's just cooler pieces like artwork, you know. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what do we have over here? We got another case. Oh, before we wander off, these shelves because this is awesome. I have something similar in my place. What is this? How did you? set this up because it actually it gives you a lot of room a lot of space it does let you uh do your thing here basically this is just a kit that i bought from uh, home depot um shelving rails uh pretty much you could go with any size any kind of color i actually stained it myself just to give it a, a cohesive look uh, what i like about this is you could chain you could have different widths put heavier pieces on here it's not expensive and it allows you to put a lot of stuff on so, right, the wall. These go just anchor right into there. Yeah, and just hold on. Yeah, and if you're looking to put heavier things, you definitely want to find the studs. Uh, that way you could 
and then you maybe go with something a little wider for big bases. And you got to really think a little bit about what you're going to put on your shelf and before these hold, you just make one. These hold what? About 80 pounds? 50? 80? Yeah, it's about 80 pounds. You could probably get it a little heavier if you used uh, maybe another rail. Uh, make sure you got into studs really well. But yeah, you definitely want to read and see how much weight you could put on your shelf, what you're going to put on there. Right. You know. But like I said, this is this is a cool setup. You know, it's, just, it's simple, it moves, and you can adjust for... A little tip, too, if you have a smaller room, you want to go with a thinner shelf. Okay. A thinner one, because then it doesn't feel like so everything's you go, on top. So you go top wide and, as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want this room to feel like everything was crushing down on me, so I kind of made sure everything was cl as close to the wall as possible. Awesome. Now, over here, you've got some more Star Wars stuff, loose figures. Yeah. And then in the corner over here, you've got another karaoke case, or um, <laughs> karaoke case. And yeah. another Ikea. Yeah. Actually, um... Everything, a lot of stuff is from Ikea, a lot of cool things. These little shelves were like three or four bucks. And uh, my thing is I like to get everything out of the way from where I'm at, like up, displayed. The higher the better, you know. So just basically, like I said, these are good for shelves on top also. And and I want to display everything I own, so what I make sure is that uh, I use every little space possible. That, so I have that's to use awesome. like, yeah. And also, okay, so then we got that. So now over here. You've got, I thought this was cool. So you've got the, the G.I. Joe collection, which I was not a G.I. Joe fan until a little bit later. But I like the way that you have them carded and how you kind of, you still show enough of the card, but you have the figure. So they're kind of, uh -huh. yeah, kind of definitely. you got them up there. So that looks really cool. Now, how long were you guys, were you collecting the G.I. Joes? Well, I think these just came out maybe about three or four, no, four or five years ago. Okay. Uh, I was a fan of the original. I did have a few of uh, the old ones, but they were all beat up, uh, used them all. They were all warped. The legs would fall off, the rubber in mm -hmm. between. Um, so when they redid the line, like I said, going back to better sculpting, they just had really cool stuff. So I decided to go get everything. So this is this is reestablishing from when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool. And you've got these these pictures down here. Now these yeah. were these are Wizard Worlds. Yeah, these are some Comic Con exclusive uh, from all the cool guys that are just Alley. You know, and they don't get enough uh, attention, I think, but they have cool stuff and they just captured Optimus Prime, Megatron, Soundwave, some of my most favorite characters. Great, great pieces, man. I love them. I actually. Cherish this more than some of the toys sometimes. Oh, it's just, ooh, sacrilege! Yeah, yeah, sacrilege! It's, it's good piece. So, and down here, I like this. You've got the shelf, mm -hmm. and then you've got some stuff underneath that's stacked, and you display the boxes, which is very cool. But I like the lightsabers and the troops of once again the ships. I think that's really really cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool like I setup. said, man, I'm big into fleets, man. The more the better. I just remember watching Star Wars: Return of the Jedi. <laughs> just All the ships. Yeah. So that's what I do, man. I like to recreate that, you know. Nice. Yeah, big groups, the big armies, are like the bigger the better. Just like a movie. The more action, the more I'm probably. And now you've enjoy. got. I I saw these earlier. These colonial vipers. You got a few of them and some of the, um, the Cylons, but. These weren't uh, at a normal store, were they? These these were a little different because I don't remember ever seeing these bad boys. Uh, yeah, they were at. Uh, from what I remember, most places you could find them were Hollywood Video. Um, they were hard to find, just in the little video section. Uh, I went to maybe about fifteen or twenty of them just to try. And those are plastic. Stuff. They're not diecast. No, not diecast. I don't know. They're just really detailed. It's one of my favorite uh, fighter ships, like X. -ray. A lot of people like the X wing and. I like the Viper. Oh, it's, a, it's a good design. I also yeah. like the Cylon. Mm -hmm. And then up here you have what? Just some rare Star Wars? Or some, yeah, some key pieces. Cut dry. Yeah, key pieces. I was a huge Star Wars fan. I still am. The only thing is Lucas likes to produce over and over again. I just oh, felt yeah. like I was buying the same thing. Because you were. Yeah, I was. So, yeah, But now that the Marvel has them and they came out with the new uh, Black Series, I, I'm probably going to resign. Oh. Yeah. They're cool. You're in trouble. I know. I'm in and then trouble. up top, I noticed more Transformers. So how are these a little different than the other ones? Uh, same characters, but like I said, they just redid them. They transform better. They stand better. They look like a more nicer piece on their own. Okay. So when you, I can't wait to open all those. I will be opening all those one day. Junior, Junior just cried. I know. Yeah. I know. So, so, so these, so these are they're they're just reproductions. There's nothing different about them other than they're just no. They're not reprodu they're reproduction. The character is the okay. same. But they're, those are the first molds. Like the the originals were more boxier, like okay. we said, vintage. Right. They had less articulation. Where those have more articulation. Cool. Actually, now, I think because I haven't opened them yet. <laughs> so go with I'm it. Go with it, have, man. Uh, okay. uh, now, this is kind of cool. We'll, we'll show this a little bit later, I think, unless Junior's panning up. But we have some ships tacked to the ceiling. Yes. So this is really cool. Now, I have to ask how these are anchored and don't come crashing uh, down. A simple ceiling screw. Uh, the little circle. 
Okay. Screw, I just put it in there. To be honest with you, I didn't even find an anchor. I just went into. Oh, oh so you just you just you yeah, said they're kind of light, and so I just made sure they're real tight. And uh, then, and then I would suggest you, finding then, something really solid to put. And in how there. do you anchor? How is it hooked to the ship? Is there? Did you did you put something that it would hook? Fish onto? wire. Very nice. Fish wire. I just put it right through anywhere I could find the crease and just hung them up. So. Yeah, I love them, and they're out of necessity. I had to put them up there too because they're huge. Yeah, but they're uh, cool. Yeah, it one it of works. Yeah. Them coming down at you, that's really cool. One of my favorite pieces from the series, that saga, because the movies weren't that good. Nah, but <laughs> the, the ships are great. Yeah, the ships. So are now good. over here, we've got a lot of more. We've got some DC stuff. Yeah. So um, what do we? What's what this we is all at? the DC Universe classic line. Um, I guess their direct competition would be the, like the Marvel Legends, but man, I like them both. But I just gravitated more to DC. Um, I didn't read a lot of the Marvel comic books when I was younger, but I did always see Superman, Batman, and growing up, and when these came out, I just, they were really done well, and I think it just grew, it wasn't something I planned on collecting a lot of, I wanted a few, and then it just kept coming, and I, you know, like the Flash, Wonder Woman, Hawk Girl, Hawkman, and... Now, did you have, obviously it doesn't look like you have every single one of them, so did you just pick up ones that caught your eye or, just specific, or, or characters that's that you like. with everything in my collection. Okay. I'm not a complete set guy. Okay. I, I pick what I like. If I don't like it, I'm not going to buy it just so right. it completes my set. So I maybe should. I would probably suggest people do that if they could afford it. But at the time, you know, I was uh, still in school and I just got what I like. Dude, I buy what I like too. Yeah, it's it's, like, it's too expensive. It's it an is, expensive hobby. It is. It is. So these are these are really nice. I know she had the older Batman. So this is all the, just the the DC stuff that you said. You know what? I like Green Lantern. I'm pulling Green Lantern. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Everything was good. They have the little builder figures too. Uh, some you of got them some loose yeah. guys over here. Yeah, yeah. You know what? With this too, I I buy both. I have to buy right. loose. I have to buy box because I just like them. I have to have a few open. You know. Sorry, awesome. Junior. But <laughs> now, <laughs> out of all your collection, what was the one figure you like? This is it. This is the prize. I found it. I did the happy dance. This is this is my my prize. It ha it has to be the recent sound wave. Which one? It's, Which guy is that? Guy? It just came out, but when I saw that, I don't think I've ever had it where I needed it more than I had the sound wave. Like when I saw it, I just knew I had to have it. You, you I, had to buy it that was, one. I haven't had that feeling maybe since I was little, and I don't even. It had to be a transformer, probably like an Optimus Prime, uh, which is actually down here. It's not the original. But it is the Cromero series, and I had to put it. I mean, that was Optimus it. Prime, Solid are my two favorite characters. But when I saw this, so this wasn't something you were tracking down. They just they came out. You said I, had I have, have to, and have it. it was hard to find. It was kind of, uh, San Diego exclusive. Toys R Us was always, you know, it's coming out this right. week, that next week, and uh, anyone who knows the line knows it wasn't the easiest to get, but it was definitely worth any kind so of. So that amount. that's it. Yeah. That that's the prize right there. That is the prize. Did man. you do the dance? Did I did. I, 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 <laughs> I had it in my hand. I was like, I just wanted to open it, but it's no. not getting open. Oh, you're getting no, another one open? Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe, but that one's staying close. So, so now we know that that one, what's the next, what's the one, the next thing that you go, okay, I need to have this. Is there anything else There is. There? Actually, right over here, there's okay. an Op Optimus Prime, and this one I actually found at Walmart. It was uh, like 60 bucks in like 2004. I didn't even know there were... I never heard of the Masterpiece right. line. I don't even think it was like, I never heard of anything of it. I saw it, it was heavy, fully die cast, and I just like, it transforms. I thought it was just right. a statue. It's just, it was like, this is, this is probably one of my favorite pieces uh, just because it totally embodied everything that I loved about awesome. Transformers. And it was just, it transformed, it's cool. They redid a lot of different issues. The one I am looking for now is the Toys R Us exclusive. Right. That one is beautiful. It's a piece of art. I can't wait to get it. But that one is right now my favorite piece. I opened it. I had no problem opening it. I don't care how much it costs. It's just dead. so. So for the next thing that you are looking for, though, your your, your next quest, yeah. your next your next yeah. quest to find it, is there a piece? Is yeah, it, that it, Optimus it, Prime. Optimus. Toys R Us exclusive. So that that's it. That's the Holy Grail. And you know what? I never saw. I that's something that even if I didn't know it was on, I I would have. There's things that I've come across and right. I wish I got. Like I saw Grimlock, the masterpiece. Right. I didn't get it. Kind of wish. That I know now, I would have scooped up you, right you away. You see an Optimus. It's, is, it, is money is money no option at that no point? Money's no option. You just, no. just yeah, lay it down. No haggle, no not wherever I find it. I was looking for it at Comic Con actually. Right. A wizard, I could not find it. No okay. one had it. And I had the money in my hand. <laughs> you were good. You were good I to was go. Looking for you were gonna pull the trigger on it. I did that hunt where I went through the same places eight times. You right. still don't got it? Like I just went everywhere. Now now, since we're collectors, and I've posted on some of my things where I go looking for stuff. Where do you find a lot of stuff? Are you a guy that goes to Toys R Us and says, okay, if it's in, I'll buy it? Or are you hunting on eBay? Are you hunting flea market? 
how do you find parts to your collection? I mean, how do you collect? What is your... your I started method? off mostly at big box stores, Toys R, uh, Toys R Us, Target, Walmart. Um, that's where I started finding all the new stuff. As I got into it a little bit more, I did tend to go toward more like Amazon, eBay, uh, Big Bad Toys. So there's a lot of websites out there that I kind of go to, but I would suggest anyone who likes collecting the hunt is probably the best part of it. So definitely flea markets are a good way to go especially if you're looking for open vintage pieces yeah now what's what's your go-to if you said okay if i have one place that i'm going to try first please i'm trying to find this space do you have a go-to do you go that's kind of hard um yeah i mean go to obviously ebay okay everyone's going to go there first maybe just to either get a price adjustment see what you're looking at but um yeah man it's kind of hard it depends on what you're looking for because now everyone knows that there's a lot of collectors out yeah. there some people just want to some people, there's a lot of comic book stores out there that they'll just want to make their little profit. They mm -hmm. want to get it out and get more. But there's a lot of guys that have that jacked up price. So it, it depends. It really depends on what you're looking for. Uh, if, if anyone was starting off as a collector, I would suggest probably going to like a Toys R Us, a Target. You know, right. start your collection off. You're not going to get those ridiculous prices. But right. It all depends. And then they got these like Maddie, Maddie Toy Store. Right. They're harder to find, but man... <laughs> when you, you know, get it, it's yeah. Cool. When you get it, it's worth it. And, and your advice, I we did a segment before about collecting comics. But get what you like. Yeah. Right. Get what you don't, like. Don't don't not profit. You're doing yeah. this for you. This is yeah. something that you enjoy doing. Definitely, definitely. Like even with comic books, I tend to wait till the entire story's out. You know, like I I that try. Guy, go, I can't go every day. Yeah, novel. graphic novel. I like that better just because I have it all there. Nice. You know, kind of like once I got the toy, I had the toy, and that's it. Awesome. Alex, thank you so much for sharing. No, thank you. I this appreciate is, this you is coming. This is a pleasure back. and a great collection. Thank you. So, well, guys, that's it. Alex's collection, sharing time with us. Stay geeky, my friends. All right, so thank you. We are back. Thank you very much to Alex. Thank you very much to Mark Wade. Hope you guys really enjoyed the interview and uh, the next, the newer episode of Collector's Case. Uh, speaking of Collector's Case, we want to go ahead and say, show you or tell you that that is pretty much what that segment's going to be. So if you're a fan out there watching this show and you have a collection, whether it be action figures, comic books, statues, you know, anything in our pop culture genre that you think you would like to share with the world, let us know. Contact us. You can contact us at comicsremix at gmail.com or you can contact Carrie directly who hosts the segment at Carrie at comicsremix.com. We won't um, disclose any personal information, so whatever you sent to us will be kept private, completely Totally private. confidential. Um, you know, we're not in this to make a buck as far as your collection goes. We just want you, we feel that a collection needs to be sp showcased. It needs to be seen. I mean, a lot of people have these cool things, you know, wh whether it be what they have in the collection, how they have it set up, you know whatever it might give another uh collector an inside view of you know maybe i should put my stuff like these this are or, your mini museum yeah they have stories you might yeah. as well show them off yeah these stories need to be told too they need to be shared. and we would like to help you tell them so again if you'd like to be on collector's case contact us at comics remix at gmail.com or contact our host of the sh segment carrie at carrie at comics remix.com there's a lot of ads i should just do this yeah or hit up you know you could actually just message us Message us on our Twitter, at Comic Streamix. Hit us up on Facebook, Comic Streamix. Oh, Carrie's got a Twitter now, too, I think. You Carrie, can, you can even just no, Carrie doesn't have a Twitter. Yeah. Leave All us right, a comment, comment, and we'll, we can private message you. Yeah. However you feel more comfortable. Basically, we want, like we, we said when we first started the show, it's a show by fans for fans. We want the participation, so if you feel you'd like to be a part of it, let us know. we would be glad to go film your stuffs. Yeah. Um, Besides that, uh, what else? Don't forget we got? to catch Big B Brian Adams spinning it out on a spinner rack. He always has some great opinions with some uh, some some good wit behind it. I think I believe Junior's always on it. Carrie sometimes jumps in. Usually the the, the mass of the crew. Yeah, is but it's in mostly there. Brian and myself. But it's some pretty good banter going on. It's some very good opinions. Some solid opinions. Going and on. it's a lot more uh, racy than this show is. So if you think we're pretty offensive here. Keep your headphones on. <laughs> yeah, keep, don't <laughs> keep listen to it out loud at work. On. That's for yeah. sure. But you'll have it's it's all in good fun. You, you can catch the spinner rack at Comic Streaming. Again, ComicStreamix.com is the hub for everything. You can watch the Comic Streamix episodes. You can get in contact with us. You know, through email on there. You can watch uh, episodes of Carrie's 101 segments. 
You can catch our regular episodes, which I think I just said. You can watch, uh, you can read our blogs. It's a link to the Spinner Rack. Uh, if not, you can spinnerrack.com, spinnerrack.podbean.com, which is where you can find it. Um, for those eagle eyed fans who have not noticed, the last two episodes, there's been no John and no Paparella's point. Um, no, we didn't fire the kid. No, he's not in the trunk somewhere. John is going undergoing his segment. We should say is undergoing some changes, so he'll be back with one more episode for this season. And then you guys, he's got a big change coming for season three, which we're all actually very excited about. And you wrestling fans will be very excited. Yeah. About. So if you're a wrestling fan, and you know you kind of dig the discussions that are online at other podcasts or other wrestling shows, and you're definitely gonna want to stay tuned to what John has in the works. Um, John, all of us are trying really hard to cater to you guys. For those of you, the naysayers out there, you know, you included, um, that have said, you know, I've, I've given John negative thoughts on his segment and stuff, then trust me, what he has planned is basically the what should have been from the get, I guess I could put it. You know, it's like, just stay tuned. He's got some. try to cover great. your ass. I'm all not of us, my it's ass. all of us included. You suck, John. But uh, we love you. you You're part of the crew. Sucks. I like John. Look at John. <laughs> no, John's my homie. Okay. He hit you just mad because he hit you in the face with a belt. Hey, you know what, man? He cheated. He cheated. Actually, you should have called this qualification. You All never. Right. I didn't want the damn thing to happen anyway. You should have called. It was. It was not a no DQ match. It was a fucking thumb wrestling match. Was, okay, but was it non DQ? Was it non DQ? Yes or no? It's a thumb wrestling. How do you okay. get disqualified with? Your index finger grabs the chair. Non DQ. That belt should be mine. Out of pity, he still has it. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, yeah, keep a lookout uh, for that. Um, as you can out continue. Out of pity, John. You have it out of pity. Here we go. You can continue. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out Carrie's 101, which is separate from his collector's case segment on our show, the 101 is a separate show produced by us, hosted by Carrie, where he breaks down a lot of how-tos, how to collect comic books, how to properly, or not properly, but introduction to board games, uh, introduction to cosplay, and introduction to just about anything in our culture. Uh, Carrie pretty much lets you know the ins and outs of it and how to get the ball rolling on it. You know, So for those of you, I, and I think to this day, one of the best ones was the how to collect comic book ones. Not because I was on it, but because of the feedback it got. That one's the one that obviously hit the most. And we had fans writing Carrie and saying, you know, I thought about getting into comics. I didn't know where to start. I watched your video. Thank you. You helped me out. And that was the, that's the point of the 101 is to really just get in there and help the fans become fans, I guess, you know? Yeah. So check out the 101 also on comicsremix.com and on YouTube. Um, I guess that's it. I mean, that's like I said, it. we're on social media. Us up, find us. Yeah. Thank you for watching. There was something else I was going to say. Nice. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're winding down the season. So just for those of you out there, Louis Bernal, who get your comics remix fixed every week and you can't wait for it, sorry to say, we do take off time. So um, we have another four episodes left in the can. Episode 16 will be our last one for season two, which is going to air, if I am correct... You wrote it down. <laughs> but Why it's are you looking there? at your phone? Right there, motherfucker. Yeah. That's where I was looking. You went like this first. I had to lift it. Man, dude, why you even keep it over there? Why can't you just put it over here? Shut up. You're going <laughs> to... The last episode... Point. Episode 16 of Comics <laughs> Remix is going to air November 22nd. Oh, um, well, that's the plan. So November 22nd will be the last episode for the season. Please make sure you join us for that. We're going to be very busy during the off-season. If you guys have any of your favorite local shops, any of your favorite collecting spots, hit us up on Comic Streamings. We'd love to go visit them and shoot at their at their stores. Spotlight them, I and we'll give you the credit for telling us where it was at and all about it. You know, um, you can help on the shoot. You could like move the lights, do something. Yeah. So yeah. So anyways, that's all I got. That's it, man. All right. Again, thank you, Mark Wade. Thank you, Alex. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week or next episode. Which right. would be what, 14? Once again, have a very good night. We just like saying goodbye. Yeah. Or I guess because we're Hispanic. Those one hour goodbyes. Yeah, you kiss somebody. All right, yeah, the, uh, I'm leaving. And then we and then talk then about oh, bro, did you see week. this? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. So you leave at 7, but you don't really leave till 9. 9 o'clock, yeah. you know. Because they can't find your coat, and then you get another slice of cake with a beer, and then you're like, what the hell, man? That's the runs. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time. So uh, next week, check out Carrie's 101. But until then, I'm still me. 
You still him. Usually. Have a good night. Usually. What are you on the off days? <laughs>